We're back. We're back. Samuel's last thought before he dies was about all the boys he kissed. Huh? That's just that's the thing he was he's thinking about all of the all of the people he used to know and their paws and their faces and all, and their lips. So he thought about all the boys that he kissed and then he died. His head got crushed. That was that were his final moments. <laughs> I mean, I think there's something kind of beautiful about that. And I and I obviously slutty, but <laughs> but still, like I think it's really nice to think of like I almost imagine that probably I'd yeah. like to think that's what I think of before I die, is all the people that I really love and their faces and their hands and like them. And the the people I did love who I kissed, like that. Like I don't know, all all that seems like kind of a very nice thing to think about before you die. You could think about a lot worse. You could think about like, oh, I need to go shopping tomorrow. I'm a lot of eggs at the group. Yeah. Like, I need to go to the grocery store. Or like, man, you know, I, uh, like Did all I leave I, the stove on dead. Yeah, exactly. Or like, oh man, I really hate my mother. Like some weird thing like that. <laughs> and it's like that, that would suck. So it's better to think about like all of these nice people and how much you cared about them and the nice times you had with them, you know? I, uh, I was interested. I'm interested in the fact that because like well, during our break, I was thinking about the fact about thinking about Samuel, and we had just been discussing parallels between Leo and Amicus, and then I remembered that like, hang on a minute, it's never pointed out, but in at Astra, like everyone in uh, Amicus's family appears to look like Amicus, and then Cassius has white hair and red eyes, mm-hmm. which I pointed out in the essay a bit. I'm like, this seems like albinism. And in, in like I I drew like half baked comparisons because I don't know you know I don't know that much about the medical stuff and I don't know how much uh, Hallie would have done that intentionally, but I was like he was close to his dead mother who specifically also had the condition that he has, and so I'm like do they both? And then I looked into ocular albinism and it's implied and it's a uh, it's inherited from the mother and I'm like this is just yeah. interesting parallels to have there, there's yeah because like, he has white fur and red eyes. There's a lot of uh, like like. There's a lot of genetic disorders that are specifically inherited from your mother, but also there's a lot of them that only show up in men because they only have one X chromosome. So although you get yeah. it from your mother, like you basically have to have gotten it from your mother because they're the person that contributed the X chromosome. If you have two, then you have a fallback. So like like a color blindness is more common in men than it is in women because if you have a defunct X or not defunct, like you have a X chromosome or X yeah chromosome with like a fucked up. Um, like color blindness, you can basically like compensate with your good one, but you don't have that option if you're a man because you only have one X chromosome. So there's a whole bunch of problems that like amongst men that you would definitely have gotten from your mom, and it's very traceable. Uh, a lot of people do like big lineage charts that way because if you just follow the X chromosome all the way back, it's like really it's, it's like a way you chart human beings. Hmm. But but no, yeah, albinism is like definitely linked to a lot of um, medical problems. It like it happens in a lot of animals you breed. For the purpose of having albinism like if you um try to get certain morphs in snakes and lizards and things you end up getting ones that have problems with uh sunlight in the same way that like not having melanin affects people with albinism and you also get like problems with blindness um there's a lot of dogs that have like blindness issues and yeah, like, somewhat I want, related I, it makes in, me wonder about samuel breeding for and cassius's eyesight if you breed for pigment, you have the uh, you can sometimes fuck up and get issues with like the eyes and other things because you're like I've just known somebody who had albinism and their eyesight was absolutely horrible. Like they had to hold stuff right up to their face to interpret them. Well, and the sad thing is that that can get like progressively worse as mm. you get older. A lot of people can't like leave their house because the sunlight is just too much. They have to like wear those really special glasses. Like it's a whole big problem. Mm. But no, it, it, like it definitely. It, it's funny that albinism came up again in like yeah. the games we're playing. But I can't. I can't think any closer about it because I know a decent amount about Cassius but I know nothing about Samuel. Exactly, yeah. Maybe he just made him look really cool I and mean, he had no medical problems. I mean, he does look really cool. He does. Especially since they kept the black, like, nose framing, like, lines that come down from around the eyes. Mm-hmm. And so he has, like, a very distinct appearance. God, you're heavier than I remember. Only what it counts. <laughs> All right, bud. Uh, in in bed. Uh, uh, yeah, when I lay on top of you, you get crushed, and it's really uncomfortable for you. That's an entire <laughs> genre of art. I, you know, as soon as I started saying that, I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's that, the, that is a thing. It's it's called horror buns. Uh, a wry smile is visible on his muzzle. 
the battered wolf clearly still loopy from all the blows to the head. Or at least, that's what I hope the ex explanation is. He keeps squeezing my side as I struggle to keep him upright. With my free hand, I dig around in my pocket and search for the Echo Motel keycard. The task is made all the more difficult by the pawing ministrations of Leo, who keep having to bat away. For fuck's sake, Leo, I'm, I'm genuinely pissed at you. We almost died, and you blew our chance to find Carl easily. I don't even know how I'm going to begin to explain to this, all the cops. Leo makes a dismissive noise. I'll handle it, you don't gotta worry. I'm sure you will. That's what his reaction to everything is, it'll just work out. Which, also Amicus did that a lot, but it's darker here. <laughs> yeah. the way that Leo approaches everything. It's not the fun but depressing uh, naivety that Amicus always had, that everything would always just work out because he was a spoiled royal and was used to things working out for yeah. him. And, but then also, like, in... Leo Am has, like, no reason to think things work out yeah. in general. And, and you have no reason to trust him, because at least in Amicus's case, you're in, you're in a different world for you. So him telling you that things are going to be all right, you have to kind of, like, take some of it, like, as, like, maybe yeah. he's right, because I don't know anything about his whole world. Part of the betrayal is realizing, oh... He's wrong. He's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, and he that, was the only person I, can, I had to depend on. It's a fun reveal. But in this one, like, you both live in the same world, and you and I, as people playing this game, relate to this world, and we know that if the cops show up, it's not a thing that's going to work out super easy to explain. Like, it's just not. And yeah. So we just know that he's just full of shit. <laughs> With Amicus, it's like, oh, maybe he's not. <laughs> like, he's but he is. He's wrapped up into even more violent things on top of already being wanted. For what was just some property damage... So, like, unless he has out, other outstanding warrants, like, I don't think that the pinball situation was going to be that dire. <laughs> like, he punched a pinball machine and he's evading the police for that. The part where he's evading the police is an escalation at yeah, that point. Yeah, no, at, like, at that point, it's basically like if you get pulled over for speeding, that's a lot less bad than just speeding away from the cops who have to then yeah, chase you. Yeah, making it a chase. Like, he's making the situation actively more dangerous for himself. Yeah. And now he's got now he's adding these violent inter interactions. I prop Leo up against the wall, giving him an incredulous look. Does he not even process what would have happened if Micah and I hadn't stepped in to help him? Leo, you just pissed off some kind of trailer park drug kingpin who knows exactly who you are. That should concern the hell out of you. Nah. Good comeback. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Wow. I've been defeated by facts and logic. Uh, there's a distant look in his eyes. Before I have time to further chastise what an idiot he's being, I hear a voice call out from behind me. Hey! Jenna's holding a small plastic bag with the words, Thank you! printed on it over and over again in bold red lettering. I like how that's just become like a... Um, like, people just like that icon i've seen people get tattoos of the the, the thank you bag yeah no it, 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 it's like it's like kind of a it's like a hip symbol right now I, I guess it's like when people get a coffee mug that has the march and robin logo on it for some reason um ajj is coming out with a new album and they're one of their like merch items is it's it's a parody of the thank you bag over and over again but it says something else hmm. i, I want to say it's something like they'll never defeat jazz cup jazz cup yeah Jazz the, the ultimate design. The, 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 the blue squiggle. Oh, oh, I don't... I guess it is like jazz. It's I was, just called jazz. Is it called jazz cup? Yeah, that's the name of the design. I always think of... Like, like, I just think 1990s office cup. Yeah. Well, just, whenever you see the that teal squiggle with like... I think it's like a red squiggle in the middle of it or whatever. It's like, a purple. Dark purple. purple. Yeah, like the... Uh, that is just... That design is just called jazz. Oh, that that's a great design. It's beautiful. Yep. The creator was uncredited and unrewarded for a very long time. And now it's like... But then people, I, when, when something becomes uh, popular and nostalgic enough, eventually you get a podcast or something that just interrogates the shit. I'm like, okay, where the fuck did this come from? I need to find it. No, I, get, I, I heard that. It's funny the things you get nostalgic for that you don't even think about. Like the printed carpet that we were talking about earlier that has all the crazy squiggles on it. Yeah. Like It's like that kind of thing. And like the jazz cup. And it's just certain things you're like... I miss that aesthetic that's just not around anymore. Stuff that's ever-present until it's suddenly gone, and then you're reminded of it years later, like gold-spined children's books. And you're like, oh. 1990s modern-style furniture. I spy books. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. I could look at those. Those, those, like, put me in a trance. They're so beautiful. 
the guy who ph- like photographs those is a genius. Like they're they're just so beautiful to look at. They're art yeah. in and of themselves. But Chase, where were you? What's going on? <laughs> Leo's expression goes a little more flat. His tail unmoving behind him. Jenna. Not the time, Leo, for your the fucking wolf bitchiness. The wolf curtly, eliciting a perplexed face from the fox. I leave for 20 minutes, and of course Leo is now beaten and shirtless. Leo gives, <laughs> she gives her, she gives me a stern look. What happened? I let out a sigh, pinching the tip of my nose before letting my paw flop down to my side. Leo tried to interrogate the tetanus alley crew by himself. That was doing fine until that squeaky-voiced fat-ass showed up. Brian. I clarify. Oh, shit. She reaches into her pocket, taking her own keycard and sliding into the door. Come on, let's get you inside. There's some basic medical supplies in the bathroom. I'll see what I can scrounge up. They They do not give you medical supplies at a hotel. Well, it is an echo. <laughs> yeah, people just steal them, so they, they wouldn't be there. I think he's got a concussion. Yeah, I don't need I don't need to tell you that you shouldn't let him fall asleep. I'm right here, you know. You can talk to me. I would if I think it would do any good. But you obviously don't listen to anything we say, as evidenced by this latest stunt. God, Leo, why are you so stupid? You're an adult. Jenna pushes the door open and I help Leo inside. I'm trying not to look directly at him, but judging by the tenseness of his muscles, I can tell he's definitely not digging Jenna's scolding. I walk Leo over over to one of the beds and help him sit down, carefully, so he doesn't smush his own tail. Easy now, big guy. The wolf palpably softens at those words, and I think I catch a slight, sad smile passed toward my direction. Despite all his idiocy, we did just survive near death together. He pats my lower back, just as Jenna shuts the door behind us. I should probably text TJ. He's doing those sports medicine courses, so he might be able to help us out a bit. He left to continue the search with Flynn after you didn't show up. Though, honestly, I think we should drive him to the urgent care down in Peyton. I look up at Leo, anticipating his response before he even speaks. I'm fine. Leo, I said I'm fine, yeah? You shouldn't be babying me over here while Carl's still out there. You're right. We shouldn't be having to do this at all. Jenna walks past us both with a glowering look of maternal disappointment before heading into the (laughs) bathroom. (laughs) Like, you really want to, if you really want to, like, scold someone and affect them, you give them that look. Like, (laughs) giving, like, the motherly, like... I'm so pissed at you, look. Like, oof, right to the heart. Ugh, it hurts. She does drop the bag of food next to us on the bed, though. Ordinarily, I'd be concerned about getting grease on the covers, but considering the circumstances, I pull out a styrofoam container from the bag and pop it open. Inside are two grilled cheese sandwiches with toast, eggs, and bacon pushed off to the side. It looks kind of haphazardly put together, but my grumbling stomach doesn't mind. I hand Leo a grilled cheese and take some bacon for myself. You feeling dizzy? Any sudden sharp head pains? Just some throbbing. (laughs) (laughs) But that's about to par for the course when I'm around you. Oh my that god, is what he's doing. Leo. Leo. It's not the fucking time. Leo, you are not on, even before this fight, we were not on good terms. Like, this is... He's so daft. Uh, my boner. He's so daft. My boner around you, Chase. Look at my boner. Aren't you flattered are you by my boner, about my boner around you? Remember when I was, like, forcefully grinding my boner into you this when is, you were saying stop and then this I is a compliment. threw a tantrum about it? This is a compliment, right? Compliment, right? Uh... He grins for a flicker of a second before taking a huge bite of the sandwich. I can't help but stare at him, wide-eyed, my face burning. It's not that I'm super offended by the flirting or anything, but now? Of all the times to do it. I know! Idiot. Leo. Leo swallows down a mouthful of bread and cheese. Judging by his expression, he doesn't seem to be a big fan of the taste. Yeah. 
Sorry, just getting sleepy. Do not fall asleep, idiot. Yep. I reach up, clutching his shoulder. Hey, come on. Don't pass that on us. You know you can't do that now. Jenna returns with some hydrogen peroxide, gauze, and what looks like a bottle of... Acetaminophen. Yeah. I sent out a message to the group chat letting them know what's going on. The signal was being kind of weird for a second, but it said sent. Or being intercepted by hackers, those Russian hackers. Je Jenna sits down beside the wolf with her can of disinfectant, to which Leo visibly recoils. I can do it. Just give it to me. The Fenix br uh, brow furrows, and she actually pulls back the can. Um, no. That is not how you're going to treat me right now. Like you treat me like shit, yeah? What? I know you've been talking ill of me behind my back, trying to keep Chase away. Jenna stares dumbfounded at Leo. I am absolutely baffled by your priorities right now. I'm going to assume this is the head trauma speaking. So what if it is? You know it's true. Leo shifts his gaze to me. She has, hasn't she? I sigh. Dude, there's no smack talking needing to be done about you. We can just witness it. Like, we don't even need to talk <laughs> like to anyone about it. We don't need to be convinced at all. I really wasn't prepared to deal with this confrontation right now. I probably should have spent more time with you. To make sure you didn't do anything like you just did. You shouldn't have to baby him. <laughs> no, Chase, this is not your fault. The sooner Leo realizes he's the one making mistakes, the sooner we can rally and figure out what we're going to do next. For Carl, remember him? The person we're actually trying to find? I wince, having agreed with the first part of what Jenna said, but it's definitely gone a step too far. Jenna, we're all concerned about Carl. I take the antiseptic spray and begin shaking the can before spritzing it on a few of Leo's wounds. The wolf barely even reacts. I've never had in a spray. I was, I was gonna say, I, I have, like, I have seen like, that before. I'm like, you're gonna get it in your eyes or something? I'm like, ugh. Yeah, you really don't want that in your eyes. His pain tolerance was always pretty heavy growing up. He'd win pretty much every game of slap hands or punch you, punch me that Flynn <laughs> Carl devised. <laughs> Well, we have a game where we just hit each other. Yeah. <laughs> I used to find that sort of toughness attractive. Guys, let's focus. Jenna holds up the flat of her palm towards me, speaking up with a curt tone. Jenna, no. Chase, you don't really believe Leo is doing this out of the genuine goodness of his heart, Jenna, right? Jenna, no. <laughs> Jenna, it's not the time either. <laughs> that he has some deep compassion for Carl. Hell, I've spoken with Carl online these past few years. Leo basically stopped talking to him the moment you left for college. That is three whole years of not giving a damn. That's, that makes the entire, that makes the Christmas, uh, the, the birthday thing so much more awkward it, and poorly yeah. conceived. And they also live in the same town. Like everything about their relationship feels worse after the Carl route. So that then going back to that, that sad birthday just is rougher and rougher to think about. Well, when we, when we first experienced it, we're like, oh yeah, it's like, that's, that's kind of a nice thing to do. Although obviously, Poorly conceived, yeah, poorly but, we, conceived. but we, we experienced it from Chase's perspective in Carl's house, kind of being complicit in the planning and also be like, oh, we got gifts and like, and also like it happened. But like in all the routes where it doesn't happen, Leo's like breaking into his house of a person that he barely clearly cares about as a weird attempt to like have an event to like impress Chase. I know it becomes, once it becomes clear that it's for Chase, it's, it, it just makes it all uh, very awkward and cringy. That's why the only person that gives him a good gift is Flynn. Cause he's in love with him. He makes some salmon salads and no, it's a blue, takes it's bluegill. It's bluegill. Well, it wasn't sometimes salmon. He just didn't have it this time. He oh yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but but so cute. <laughs> oh, I'm all I'm all edgy and, and mean, but on the inside, I just want to make you a salmon dinner and he's buy a you a really nice boyfriend. gift. Maybe maybe Flynn's best boy. <laughs> Leo's jowls pull back along the corners of his maw for a moment before he reaches up and clutches his temple. Tch. That's real hypocritical of you to say. Don't. Jenna looks up at the ceiling, her usual cool and collected demeanor gone. It's clear Leo's actions have pushed her past the point of calm understanding. Don't? Don't what? 
Don't stop you from laying into me while you're guilty of the same? Yeah, you left everyone behind, didn't you? Jenna looks stunned for a moment before her brow furrows once again. Oh yes, Leo. A completely unjustified decision. Unrelenting neglect, abuse, and traumatic influence is no reason to distance oneself from the sacred nuclear family unit. It is not often that Jenna outright expressed what went on in her tiny house growing up. We all figured she wasn't keen on, on representing herself as someone to be pitied, so we generally didn't pry. Her bringing this up now definitely means this is a touchier subject, and Leo knows this. After this outburst and your latest behavior, it is any wonder that we don't is it any wonder that we don't reach out to you much anymore? Leo's unfocused gaze shifts from Jenna to me and back again. Chase talks to me. Uh, no, he doesn't. N no, he does nope. not express his true feelings at all. Like no, well, it's just the, like uh, we've we've definitely pointed out that Chase has like straight up like he ghosted Leo for years. So like now Leo's like manufacturing a ghost chase to talk to him and it's just getting dark that's really fucking depressing I squeeze Leo's shoulder guys Carl let's focus on Carl what are we gonna do about him I flash Jenna a, ple a pleading look yeah he still messages me from time to time I squeeze harder uh oh is he telling is it true? <laughs> wait, what wait what? Chase's squeezing reactions imply that he's trying to stop this conversation from happening, which implies guilt. Like that oh. Chase actually has been messaging Leo. Oh. I th I think he ha mm. Mm. That is okay. So when 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 Leo's like, "Oh, Chase talks to me." I thought he just meant like Chase, last night. No, well, I thought he just meant not even that. I just thought he meant like, oh, like Chase is open with me. Like Chase, Chase talks to me about his problems because, because I, because I, I, because. But the thing is, it's like whenever we interact with Leo, we're basically just hiding a part of our actual feelings and making the situation okay, and never actually expressing to him how we really feel because Leo can't understand it or handle it or all this other bullshit. I, so I thought, I thought he meant that, right? Yeah. But then the idea of like him talking to to ghost chase i'm like oh yeah he is doing that so yeah maybe he does think that we're having really deep conversations about his like all all of our personal feelings and all this nonsense but you're right the squeezing harder thing is kind of like a stop talking stop yeah, talking it makes kind of it thing sound like more, like chase <sighs> is keeping things from us so you did chase so you, you don't reach out to the other people in this group but you still reach out to leo mm. if, you, if you reach out to everyone occasionally that would be okay but but if you're like literally only messaging leo even though jenna and tj live in your fucking town they go to the same college as you like that is pretty pretty bad i squeeze harder he says he misses me and then he can't wait to see me again that he misses us being together <sighs> what jenna peers at leo incredulously her arms folded across her chest. When no one says anything in response, she unfolds her arms, her expression softening some. Oh. Wait. Seriously? Her attention shifts to me. You've been texting Leo that you want to get back together this whole time? No. Not not really, I mean. I barely text him. Hmm, I don't know if Chase is telling the truth or not. It's always late at night. Leo speaks with a droll monotone. My phone flashes, and it's you. You bring up all the old times we messed around, and how you want to do it again. You get kind of intense, too. Like last time, uh, when you walked, when you talked about, you know, how you wanted me in you again. Leo, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Jenna's face. <laughs> my face absolutely burns. I want to just throw my paw over my muzzle and shut him up, over, over his muzzle and shut him up. Oh, how could he be bringing this up at a time like this? How could he be bringing this up? That means it's true. Like it means it's true. Or bringing it up at all. Jenna's brow is raised high now. 
Before she can say anything, Leo speaks again, gesturing forward with jittery movements. I'm not fucking lying, yeah? I can show you the texts. I... I saved them. Of course you would. You got rid of them the next morning. <laughs> Every time. Oh, because we have regret. A dull throb pounds within my head. The intrusive thoughts... As pointed as Jenna's gaze, which is very much aimed at me right now. They made you feel guilty. Out of everything. That's what you feel guilty about? Okay. Wow. Neither of you told me any of this. I practically want to scream now. Carl, let's focus on Carl. Oh my god. Anything to get the spotlight off me. Chase is an asshole. He oh, really is. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Every, every, like I said, every playthrough we add another little dent in yep. Chase's... He gets worse every run. Yes. To the point where you're like, oh, who does... Who deserves to be with Chase? I'm like, no one deserves to be with Chase. <laughs> I mean, Chase is less bad than some of these Leo's people. Leo's good ending is Kuzu's bad ending. <laughs> In a way. Kuzu, you could do better. <laughs> Maybe they're good for each other. I don't know. I don't know. But there's nothing really that special about Chase. Not, I mean... Ugh. Like, it was apparent to me very early on that there was nothing super special about Chase. I just thought he was like, oh, like, he's basically just like the narrative character, yeah. the everyman, we just relate to him the most, kind of, like, he has some, uh, some agency, but not, like, the most. But then, like, but then not only is he, like, not that interesting, like, how, like, Flint's like, you're boring, you know, he kinda is, but also, like, he actually has some very negative traits, and now I'm wondering why these people are all fighting over him, and why everyone <laughs> wants to fuck him and stuff. Jenna, you, Jenna, you can do better! Jenna. She has and will. Yeah, the horse, the the horse the guy. Zebra. Yes. The zebra. <laughs> it's like he, he, I've never been with a zebra, and then she mentions the zebra like hours later. Zebra. <laughs> <laughs> Chase has constant adequacy problems in his narration. Jenna's cute, and she likes anime. Like, Jenna, you could do better. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two factors. Hit hit me up, Jenna. Like fuck, Leo. Leo Leo's the worst. So Leo. Doesn't deserve to be with anyone. But Kuzu can do better. Kuzu's sweet with his little desert landscaping that he does with his yard. He's a fucking adorable. Yeah. Um, I just laugh at the, uh, what is it? Toaster made a, uh, a tier list of how, how good and bad every Echo character would be. <laughs> and the, the top, top S rank winner is Jenna, followed by Kuzu. And, like, Raven is, like, an A... And it's, it's like, no, he's not an S. And, like, fucking, like, Chase and Leo are both, like, C's or D's. <laughs> like, they're just, like, well, like I think they're clear, like, canonically probably not good at sex. <laughs> I, I get the impression that, like, well, first of all, Chase is uncoordinated. See how often he trips? <laughs> Can you trust him in bed? Secondly, Can you trust him? <laughs> he's gonna make a mistake. Okay. <laughs> uh, Can you trust him? <laughs> Like he trips over his own feet. Word. How coordinated can he be? I'm just saying he's gonna, no. like, and and then and then I get the impression Leo's just like, he's like I don't know. He's like, he just like grunts and he goes for like two minutes and then passes out. It's like that was that was great, Chula. right? That was great. And the, the person's just like, oh, okay, good night. And then he Love like, you, and, and he's all sweaty and almost like rub himself all over you all night. Like, he, like <laughs> you know, and he probably like has his breath that smells like TV dinners. Like he's yeah. just he's just like <laughs> the emotional trauma of the TDV dinners. It's still there. It comes up more than the murders. I care about that less. <laughs> <laughs> Jenna probably tries Jenna probably thinks a lot about the person she's having sex with and makes it really good. She's been the best at flirting so far. She fixated on she she zeroed it on Chase's insecurities and knew to compliment him. Yeah. Like what a good Yeah, no. Thumbs up. TJ's probably like kind of skittish, but that might be kind of cute for some people. So <laughs> you can make that work. You can be a little sub, you know. Uh, Flynn's probably really good. Flynn's probably just like real dom. Like <laughs> I can see that. And then they cook you fish in for breakfast. Call it the twink breaker. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really pertinent. It was just a couple of times over the span of three years. Chase. It is, at least somewhat. She hesitates a second, trying to find some 
gentle phrasing as she shifts her weight from one foot to the other. Not the nitty-gritty details, of course, unless we were all practically inebriated, or particularly inebriated. She looks between the two of us. At the very least, it partially explains Leo's behavior. Though I'm not saying it justifies it. He's still wearing that bracelet, Chase. That's your fault. <laughs> there you go again. I'm right here, and you're still talking right over me. He hunches forward some. You're injured, injured, Leo. Plus, your words and actions have been exceptionally irrational lately. So forgive me if you aren't given a spot at the grown-up table. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Jenna. Leo ignores her, beginning to mumble. At first, I was confused. Why were you acting like this? Trying to take away my chance to make things right. You've always been cruel, but never this bad, yeah? Cruel? Jenna lets out an amused but exhausted noise, pinching the bridge of her muzzle. Are you implying that I'm stealing Chase from you? As if he were an object to be conquered and taken? That is a regressive... Leo starts talking in that same deadpan voice before Jenna finishes. You know what you're doing. Attitude towards someone you claim to understand so deeply. Jenna continues speaking even, th even throughout the wolf's words. But hey... That's just who you are. Leo, please, relax. Stop talking. I begin wrapping gauze around some of the disinfected wounds. It's hard to tell and difficult to focus with what's going on, but some of these might require some stitches. His large head turns to look at me, but his pupils are hidden behind his half-open eyelids. Just, just close my eyes and fall asleep. Wait, no, don't do that. And then you're right here with me again. Jenna's nostrils flare, exasperated. I'm about to smack him awake. I frown. I don't, I don't recommend hitting Leo. Uh, don't do that either. You came down to Echo to surprise me the other week. I thought that was really nice of you. Showed you cared. I have no, I have no clue what he's talking about. For the past few weeks, I've been cramming for midterms and streaming old movies with Vincent in my in my dorm room. Vincent, my Half Life box. <laughs> Your what? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, I I remember that. I do remember now. A stupid box. You told me about that. For a moment, I think Jenna gives me a slightly accusatory look, but doesn't say anything. Instead, she grabs a few strips of bacon before walking to the other side of the room and checking her phone. Okay, the signal is completely messed up. My bars are bouncing up and down like they're on a trampoline. She holds her phone higher, squinting at it. Meanwhile, I'm trying to keep Leo upright as I wrap a particularly nasty gash on his arm. He must have cut himself when he fell down. Maybe a tetanus shot is in order when we get back when we get to the doctor too. You were kind of thin, which was cute, but you should eat more. I was going to have Pops cook you those hamburgers with the jalapeno ketchup you liked. He's not really making much sense at the moment, but at least the focus isn't on me anymore. Priorities, Chase. I have a feeling I'm, I'm going to get a bit of a scolding from Jenna later, though. I always thought Leo's dad's burgers were kind of iffy, but I never wanted to be rude. The goatee, though. <laughs> you, sh you shaving it was kind of funny. You were so proud of that thing. But it was like you were doing everything you could to be cute. For me. <laughs> so uh, that's the lack of goatee is cute for Leo. Not even like not even Leo likes the goatee. Ah, uh, that's so funny. It's like it's like, oh you you're trying to be cute for me. You got rid of that thing that we all hate. Which magically grew back in a week. Yeah, obviously he's delusional, but I just think it's funny that even he's like, Yeah, I'm like you you were being cute for me. You shaved off your goatee. Yeah. Jenna's frowning deeply at her phone now. Whether it's because of what Leo said or something on her screen is unclear. Without looking, Leo brings up a giant paw and squeezes the end of my chin. I quickly push it away, and he seems surprised for a moment when he feels the untrimmed scruff. Ah. Is that really you, Chase? Oof. I catch Jenna peering pointedly at the wolf before glancing back to her phone. 
I'm thinking maybe we should start driving to the clinic now. I'm not even sure if the others got my texts, and the stupid phone can barely buffer the messaging app. I've tried both it and the standard SMS. I reach into my pocket and pull out my phone. It's been getting slowly dark. I, I was right about to scene. say that. The spot where the bars indicate service and Wi-Fi aren't there anymore. At least, at first. I see them flicker back on for a second before disappearing again. I've never seen it do this before. Yeah, my Wi-Fi is messed up too. I press my thumb over the power button. I guess I'll try turning it off and on again? Jenna frowns. Hmm. Then I suppose there's no point in checking my laptop. She lets out a long exhale before shoving her phone back into her pocket and looking at me. Before I give up entirely, let me try your phone real quick. You've always had the best signal. That is, unless you've got something on there you'd rather not show me. Her tone is idle and nonchalant, but her words are definitely meant as a jab. Hey, come on. I let go of Leo, giving the Fennec my best annoyed look. I can explain all this later. It's just been bad timing with... And then Leo goes still. I turn to look into his eyes and notice they're still open. Oh no! <laughs> oh my god. That really, sp <laughs> really scared me. <laughs> oh. It was animated. It was an I was uh, I didn't think I was gonna see anything animated in this game. <laughs> that was really weird. Uh, I didn't like that at all. It was really unnerving. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> you set up this precedent of nobody moving and it's yes. moves and it's really scary. <laughs> but there's something behind him. Oh boy. <laughs> hey. What? I step back. Leo mumbles something inaudible. The figure behind him stands still. It's body blurred and dark. Like the light of the room won't touch it. It's like staring in a funhouse mirror, except the thing in front of me isn't following it, my movements as I back further and further away. There's a gasp from the corner of the room. Chase. Jenna's voice comes after a few seconds of silence. What? What is that? She speaks in a half yell, half whisper. I, I, I don't know. I respond without thinking. The figure still stares at me. As I back away, I notice that its socketed eyes follow me without it ever moving its head. My foot catches the edge of a suitcase and I have to quickly grab the dresser so I don't tumble over. I suck in sharp breaths between my teeth, my heart pounding. No reaction. Ten seconds have passed now, and the thing is still here. Leo stirs, but only somewhat. His eyes roll back into his head, and he turns slightly toward the direction of the doppelganger. Only then does it begin to move as well. It rests a shadowy, furry pod on Leo's own. Hmm? Oh no. Yeah, save. Well. Save, Keith. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, to be completely fair, I kind of want to see what happens if you retaliate, because I don't think it's good. I think that don't touch me might be the losing option, but maybe not, because saying nothing. So Leo, Leo thinks that you're the imposter right now, or at least he kind of implied that he might think that you're the imposter. He, so, yeah, he had this moment where he saw the goatee back and suddenly questioned... If we were real. Yeah. So it makes me think that us standing up to him might be the best, because in the future, Leo will know that the other one's incorrect, as opposed to Leo siding with that one later, which might affect us negatively. This is just un such uncharted territory that I'm like, I don't, I have no fucking clue what this does. <laughs> I have no idea wh which reaction will do what, or if even the reactions will matter past the next three lines. <sighs> I mean, I kind of, like, if, if, if I was in this position, I'd be like, he's all yours, take him. <laughs> I would say nothing, because I'd be like, 
Yeah, the fucking animated ch the chase doppelganger. <laughs> what the fuck? That, like I said, that really spooked me genuinely. <laughs> I just was not expecting something to, to. I wasn't expecting to see anything move, and it just kind of crept in the side of the screen, and I didn't like it. Yep. <sighs> Don't touch him. I wince as the words leave my mouth, spoken without thought. Chase, don't. Why? Its voice is garbled and sounds like nothing. To, and sounds nothing like me. Like a clipped sound bite from an old cassette tape. Just don't hurt him. Leo. <clears throat> Leo lays there, conked out and helpless. It's such a contrast from the fuming predator striking at Brian I saw just 30 minutes ago. You've hurt him plenty. No. I try to swallow, finding my throat dry. Leo's lips move again, and this time I can hear him clearly. I love you. Love you, too. He speaks in my voice this time, crystal clear with no distortion. The affection is slightly perturbed, and I realize it's how I sounded when I responded to Leo earlier. Its shadowy visage fades into the surroundings. Until it's completely gone. I can feel the goosebumps beneath my fur subside. And breathing is somehow easier all of a sudden, the air less thick. Leo sits up, still in a sleepy daze. He clutches at his paw, feeling nothing there, and a confused and sad expression crosses his white face. I finally look over at Jenna, who's backed against the bathroom door. She rubs her eyes, seemingly looking on in disbelief. Neither of us say anything trying to process what the hell that was. It felt like a dream, but one I could actually feel. The room itself had a sort of ozone-y smell to it, but that's completely gone now. Surprisingly, Leo's the first to speak. Thank you, Chase. He says, still looking at his paw. What? What? That's all I can say. One of Leo's ears flick, and he turns his attention back to me. For being here for me. Jenna walks up, touching the space where the doppelganger was moments ago. What the fuck? I'm surprised that we that this kind of scenario had a witness. <laughs> yeah. Usually, yeah, I was just, uh, like, I, This is the I, kind of, like, fucked thing that would just happen, and then just, you'd be like, Just to chase. Cool, can't like, say anything about this to anyone. This, this, this sort out. of shit happens like to Chase all the time, but it's usually yeah. just him. She reaches down, grasping her wrist and checking her pulse, pinching herself a few times while she's at it. Because like, there's no, there's there was no lead up to this for them in this timeline. Like, this just a wildly supernatural thing happened out of fucking nowhere, and now they have no context for this. Like, their understanding of what's been happening is is recharacterized. Was I drugged? You saw that too, right, Chase? I nod, trying to speak, but only a croaking sound comes from my throat at first. I cough, then try again. I saw it. I think that was the thing from my dream. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Jenna turns, walking back towards the bathroom door. God, Chase, don't say that. The thought clearly appears to unnerve her. I'm... I'm sorry, but that was real. There has to be an explanation for whatever that was. I'm about ready to start looking for hidden cameras here. I glance down at my suitcase and spot the familiar orange hardbox container that I keep my camera equipment in. If only I'd gotten whatever that was on film. I exhale, noticing that my legs are still shaking. It's all so familiar. We should probably get out of here. Agreed. I'm going to grab my stuff and pack your trunk. You think we should leave? Yes. I need to get back to Pueblo and take a few mental health days. We'll finish packing, pick up TJ, and drop Leo off at the clinic. His dad can take, take him home later. 
Leo picks at a, his freshly wrapped bandages. Why did it touch him? I need to find Carl. Jenna says nothing to Leo's insistence, the fennec shoving her dirty clothes into a garbage bag. Leo, I don't really know what more we can do. I'll handle it, and then you can come back. His red eyes meet mine for the first time in a while, and I'm struck by the level of compassion in them. For a second, it reminds me of the best moments of our relationship. With my heart still thudding in my ears and my legs weak, I manage to force a smile toward the dazed wolf. Right, of course. Doctor first, though. I'm, I'm about ready to check myself in, too. <laughs> he cants his head, peering at me curiously. I'll find Carl, don't worry. There's a knocking on the window. Awkward taps, followed by a crooning uh -oh. falsetto voice. Oh. Carl. I found Carl. It makes Jenna hmm. and I jump, both of us freezing in place. Yeah, who is that? Uh, who's there? Leo asks sleepily. Oh. It's me, Micah. More knocking. This time a little harder. Micah. Leo blinks suddenly seeming more awake. He clutches at the end of the bed, pushing himself up to his feet. The wolf's a little wobbly, his tail swaying before, behind him as he tries to keep his balance. I like how it's not giving him the name, though. I feel like it's not him. Yeah. Yeah, it's me. Open the door. There's something off about his voice. I don't think it's him. Leo steps over toward the window and draws the curtains before I can tell him to stop. The familiar outline of the bat's massive ears pokes up over the bottom of the sill. He's crouched down like he's afraid to be seen. Jenna steps up beside me, watching on from a distance. Micah lifts his head a little and I notice that he has this strange expression on his face, like he's not fully awake. It's the other Micah. There's also something attached to the scruff of his neck. Ugh. Oh. Oh. The bat's face is... Oh, no. His snout squarely against the window, blood squirting from his nose and coating both the pain and his face. Brian's holding his head up against yeah, the window. I think he just slammed his face against the window. Fuck. Oh, God. Leo, get back. Micah slumps aside, falling out of sight as the figure who is making the voices reveals himself. Brian. Well. Oh, can today God. chill? No. We'd like, we had some bacon. That's been all we've had. Like, this is a bad day. <laughs> this has been a very bad day. I want to go to bed and start over. <laughs> the bear rams open the door, bits of splintered wood from the frame showering the carpet. Leo, get back. Look how the background's distorted. Yeah, it's got a pin thing going on. Pinwheel. Leo turns to face him just as something metal strikes across his face. I don't hear the impact, but Leo crumples just the same. He points the thing at me now, and I realize quickly it's a gun. He smiles at me for a second, approaching me next. I try to back up, but there's nowhere to run. He grabs me by the shirt and I feel my body swing around. Don't you fucking... Oh. Oh, we haven't been here in a while. No. Ah. Us getting knocked back took us back to being knocked out in Route 65. That coyote latches onto my shoulder, yanking me back. Something <laughs> I'm sick of the sound. Uh, yeah, I hate that. Heart, ha something hard smacks into my skull, and I feel my mind rattle. I lurch away. Essentially, oh god, that Thank felt you. bad to even have it fade away. Ugh. I lurch away, essentially butt bumping the coyote as my ears ring from the prior blow. TJ is still on the ground, crying and covered in booze as the bullies stand around him. My movements go sluggish. It's like I've become a zombie, shambling toward the door as my vision blurs. 
Is this what being knocked out feels like? I clench my fists and keep up my pace, trying to blink the blurriness away. Eventually, I reach the entrance. Carl? Leo? As I reach the outside, my knees lock and I drop to the concrete. The impact rattles my bones and I catch myself with my wrists, just barely managing to avoid falling directly on my muzzle. We need a fall count for Chase. Yeah. Well, this one, this one doesn't count because we've already had this one. I know, but still, like... Still. I take a deep breath. I'm still conscious. At least half conscious. I continue crawling, trying to ignore the throbbing pain. Carl! Shouting now, my voice sounds foreign to me. Shrill, childlike, pathetic, and increasingly hoarse. Leo! My voice shouldn't be this croaky. I've barely talked today. I'm in the middle of the road now. Where's Carl? I should get out of here before a car comes. I pull myself along the asphalt, feeling my skin scrape beneath my fur. I want to stand, but I'll probably just fall again. And so I keep crawling, rolling under what seems like some kind of detention basin. I stare up at the sky, fighting the sudden fatigue and gritting my teeth through the pain. At first I think it's blood that's got into my eyes, but upon rubbing them I realize that isn't the case. The sky is... different. Like someone slapped one of those colored gel matte filters over it. What the hell? I rub my eyes again, attempting to focus. I can't stay here. TJ. TJ's in deep shit. Those idiots. Those... Those assholes. Sucking in a sharp breath through my teeth, I rise to a stand, praying my knees don't lock up again. Find Carl. Find Leo. I stumble out of the detention basin, feeling packed soil beneath my feet. A dirt road. Looking behind me, I realize I must have crawled farther than I thought. Parsons looks... over a mile away? That can't be right. I see a van ahead. It looks rusted and old, but there's a light on inside. I step stiff nakedly down the road a ways, reaching the bend where the vehicle sits. The same redness the sky is tinted with pulsates from the interior. I try to speak, but no words come from my throat. It's like a dream. I want to do the rational thing and announce myself, but I can't. I move closer peering into the dusty back window. Inside the window is another window, and in that window, a little red dot in the corner, flashing on and off. Uh. In the window within the window, there's a writhing, there's a writhing, flashes of fur contorted and undulating in constant, restless motion. Yeah, the window within the window is a camera screen. Yeah, the blinking red dot. Something is trying to hold it in place. I hear a clap and a cry. The clapping continues, louder now, rhythmic yet singular applause. Yes, like what we said earlier. This is what you want, says the voice that cried. I stare, slowly finding the will to speak. No, I need to help my friends. Do you know where they are? The voice shifts some, more urgent. We heard gunfire coming from across town. It's real bad. Gunfire? I didn't hear anything. Please, help me find my friends. We can't find them all now. We need to go. They're lost. No, they're not. I I'll keep looking. I'll keep looking myself. You're just going in circles. I feel tears well up within my eyes, a lump in my throat containing a choked sob. Please. The van's back door is open. I'm standing too close and it pushes me onto my back. The red light is gone now, replaced with darkness, shifting shadows within. I see them now. Tarantulas, their eight, le their eight legs fuzzed with white and rust-colored stripes. 
white and rust colored. Oh. Huh. Like Micah like, and Leo. Oh, uh, see, I was thinking just Leo. Because the set, the two, those two separate colored tr sets of tarantulas that scattered when the door opened. Well, I, in the I, last I one, I didn't realize that this was a callback to Route sixty five when the tarantulas happened in the last one. Well, the last one they described them as being. Uh, <clears throat> it was a pile of them of two colors. Yeah, but it was it was it was the 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 tan ones, the, like the blonde ones, and then there was the. Um, like like Mexican red legs or something like like black yeah. and red, and there was more of one than the other because Leo is larger than Micah. Yeah, but Micah's not tan. No, but he's white. They're being described as white here. Yeah, I know. The last one described them as blonde, though, which is why it's confusing. They're on me with haste. Two of them, one on each of my arms. They bite so hard, so quickly, I can't yell. They pull and tug at me, an another pair at my legs. Brrr. I'm pulled up and into the van, my body stretched upon a squishy something that begins to sink against my arms and legs. There's no more light, and I stare paralyzed at what I think is the ceiling of the van in the pitch blackness. It feels like restraints are binding me in place. I try to adjust my eyes to the darkness, but everything seems blurry and unclear. My head throbs like a heartbeat, and the pangs of pain unrelenting. My fur bristles. Where did the spiders go? Breathing has become more difficult, as if the oxygen in the van was running out. I feel the veins in my neck bulge as I try to, gra to gasp for large breaths, but my body is not my own. Light seems to pop as the ringing in my ears intensifies. Something is above me. I can sense it. There's a garbled muttering coming forth from it, as if spoken through a poorly tuned AM radio. It sounds... like me. Mm. You knocked that him out? That might be Clint, uh, Duke? Why would that be Duke? Uh, cause Duke and... Oh, and Brian hang out together. You maybe. Did, like, you have like, in the hotel room. I, f I figured Duke or Clint, I don't know. You knocked him out? Uh... I, I swear, I, I barely touched him, man. Oh, it's Leo and the Coyote. Leo and the Coyote. We're still remembering Route 65, but so, I... So Leo's confronting the Coyote that punched us. Oh, back when we were younger. Yeah, it was, I, I thought I was gonna, like, I was like, it doesn't seem like yeah. how Brian would talk. Fucking pants on. I have no idea what that is. Dude. Just go. Leo. I go before he wakes up. Oh, that was Micah. If that yeah, is Micah, that's, that's, that's this right. is what, this is after the door just opened. Yeah. So we're still. I was confused because when things started happening, I thought we were. I was. I was expecting us to transition back to Brian. That's what I thought was happening. Also, so I thought we were. I thought we were done with the flashback. But when we, when we played Route sixty five, this never. Maybe this happened and we just didn't remember it. Maybe where we, where we wandered out to the van and got hit by the van door and basically passed out. I know the door part happened, like that happened in the flashback, and the, I think the tarantulas happened, but I feel like then we just woke up in the building. I don't remember this conversation, but also we wouldn't have context for it very well. I'll see you, uh, party? It goes quiet. Then after a few more seconds... Chase. 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 The voice changes. This time the voice is throbbing within my head. Have you ever killed anyone? Hi. Bye. Oh no, we're in Brian's apartment again! Uh, <laughs> all wrong answers, no upsides. <sighs> uh, so this is a lot. Today's a lot. It has been a lot. Yeah. Moral of the story, sleep through your Fridays.
Just skip them. Because they're is, all bad. Yeah, yeah. Friday's a yeah. bad day. Friday hasn't had a single good thing happen today. The cure was wrong. Yeah, no, we're not in love today. No.